Hello, today we will prove one of the most important properties of the reservoir sampling algorithm. Let's say we have a stream of n items and we want to obtain a sample of the stream. The sample size is k, but the size of the stream is n. And we want that at any given time step of the stream, okay, so at the ith time step, any item in the sample has the same probability of being there. Now the algorithm works as follows. If we are at a time step that is smaller than the size of our sample, we just put this new item in our into our sample and be done with it. So every item at this point is in the sample with probability one. Else, with probability k over i, replace one of uh, the items in our sample with probability 1 over k. Okay, so we only choose to replace one of those items with probability k over i, but if we have chosen to do so, we will pick one of the, uh, the items in the sample with equal probability. Remember, k is the size of the sample. Now we want to prove that this algorithm indeed produces this property where every item from the stream is in the sample with equal probability. The basis here, we say that i equals k, where k again is the size of our sample. And the probability of any item being in the sample is k over k and is just one. So indeed, every item is in the sample with probability one. And in that case, this is equal probability for every item in the sample. Okay. We could have also chosen i uh, to be one here. Okay, so we could have shown the basis to be true just for the very first time step. This also would have been okay. Now the induction is over i. We have shown that in the ith time step this works all right. And now we want to show that in the next time step it still works out nicely. So assume our first i elements have been chosen with probability k over i. This we also call the induction hypothesis. The algorithm chooses the i plus one element with probability k over i plus one. This is just part of the algorithm. Should we choose this element, each element in Ti has probability 1 over k of being replaced. Again, just part of the algorithm. Now the probability that an element in Ti is replaced with the i plus 1th element in the i plus 1th time step is therefore this probability times this probability here. Okay, so it's actually the other way around. We first say, okay, we choose this um, element with probability k over i plus one. And then we also have, this is a logical and or a probabilistic and if you so will, uh, with probability one over k. Now this multiplication here gives us this probability one over i plus k. And this is the probability of one element in our sample being replaced with a new element in the i plus one time step. Okay, with, with the new element, with x uh, i plus one. Now thus, the probability of an element not being replaced is the <coughs> complementary probability. This just gives us i over i plus one. So Ti contains any given element either because it was chosen into T and not replaced. Okay, so for an element to be in 
our sample i plus one, we first have to have chosen it. And this we have done with k over i, again, our induction hypotheses. And then we have to not have replaced it. And this we do with probability i over i plus one. And so this product equals k over i plus one. And this is true for every item in our sample. So every item in our sample t i plus one is there with probability k over i plus one. So we have shown that in the i plus one time step, every item that already has been in our sample is in our new sample with equal probability. And now or because it was chosen in the latest round with probability k over i plus one. And this is just okay. Our new item is also in the new sample t i plus one with probability k over i plus one, just like all the other items we have looked at before. So indeed, every item is in our new sample with probability k over i plus one. And this is exactly what we wanted to show.